Yes, I'm doing something for myself. Let me just be coded. This is not a space to be coded. You don't know the next person that needs you for something. And that's why, you know. Yeah, let's get into the work for today. Yeah, just a bit of recap of last week. We, we, uh, we did some, we revisited the um, lookups, we, and we, last week was when we did X lookup, we reset, we, we did um, V lookup again, though we, we, we've done v, v lookup in the first two, but we reinforced it yet again. And we looked at index and March, and then we look at other um, lookup op option, especially I think we, we did also um, just the lookup. So we use the lookup just to um, get uh, data from other sheets and then we populated it. So this week we'll be looking at something else and, and this is one of the fundamentals. Though we've actually done some of it during the course of our engagement, but we just want to speak to it. Oh, sorry, excuse me, please. So we just want to uh, speak to it and, you know, get people to understand that this is what they are doing when they actually are doing this, because you get into a space and you'll be asked to clean up your data. And you'll be wondering, uh, how do I clean up data? How do I? Well, what do they mean by data cleaning and the like? So let's see how we can actually perform that today. All right, so um, I'll be populating this data that we have. I mean, the plain sheet with some of our data. So let me just pick a book of data and then we start doing some things on it. All right. So from that our uh, usual sheet, uh, I don't want to go into a new sheet, I mean a new data set because it has not been shared. And I think we had an agreement that any data that will be used in class should be one of those that has been shared with us. So because none has been shared, so we'll just use um, a part of what we used we were used to. So I just took about a hundred of these. That's ninety nine. And then I want to perform some cleansing. So, so let's forget about where this is coming from. So, in this particular data set, we we have we, we want just to have um, a unique line. So, what do I mean by a unique line? We want to have just one one of each. So when I say one of each, we want to have, so let me take out this. All right, let, let me leave it because we possibly will we'll do some things on it. So first of all, we want to take out every duplicate in this particular um, data and not just here across board, all right? We want to take out all the duplicates across board. So we don't have, we don't want to have two of these. We don't want to have two of these. Um, well, we may end up having two of these, and that's where we we'll then get to understand what duplicate is and what duplicate is not. And um, the word duplicate is very relative. Uh, this is what I mean. By the time you're talking about um, duplicate, sometimes we leave them because like these sheets from our first week understanding, we know that this data is from a transaction. We, we, we target a drop shipment transaction and you know as people are buying things you know somebody like this lady now let me classify yeah clara the lady like this lady she bought two items um while she's i mean she's placing this order and that's why the order number got repeated twice because each line line this line two that row two is actually for the first item she ordered and row three was the second item she ordered. We understand that. 
and that does not amount to duplication because each role has a unique item on it. So each role has a unique item on it. But in this case that we're talking about, it's a duplicate in column B. Yeah, by the time we're looking at it holistically, we definitely know that these are not duplicates. But when we look at it just by row, row B, I mean column B, we, we understand that it is a duplicate because it had appeared twice in row B. So yes, the explanation that, oh, I mean, it, it appeared twice in column B. The explanation that these two, these two rows were actually um, independent item speaks when we're looking at it across the row. But when we're looking at it across the column, we see that it's actually a duplicate. So we possibly might want to remove the duplicate. Why? Because we just want to get the other ideas. So we are not um, trying to get anything in relationship. I mean, relating to, okay, how many of these were purchased? We just want to know how many others went out. So you say, please, get the total number of orders that were actually made today. So the total number of orders. So in this, and, and you know, get the date those orders were made. And trust me, this date will not be different from this date because so long they have the same order number, they will be ordered on the same day. And I mean, it is assumed according to this data that they were delivered on the same day. I mean, in practical terms, it's possibly does not happen that way. Uh, I've ordered things that, I, I mean, in the same cards, and I got them on separate date. And, and sometimes you will see them telling you even while ordering that this item will be delivered on this day and this on that day. But according to this data before us, I, I haven't reviewed the data, it is assumed that the order that goes on the same day gets shipped on the same day, regardless of the item in the cart. So, and that assumption we will stick to. So now, so we are sure that this date will be the same as this, that is the date in cell C2 will be the same as the date in cell C3, D2 will be the same thing as D3. So, which constitutes duplication? All right, it is the same already. It is the same old date. It is the same ship date. So, when we're talking about um, data claim, so what we, one of the things we're talking about is we just want to have the data in the form that we want to have it used. It, it's a way of presenting the data in the form that we want to have it using. And if we want to go by the way um, of, of divination, we, we might have data cleaning as, as a, a, an approach to setting your data in a, I mean, in a usable form. So, and it's actually very, a significant step in data analysis or business analysis or anything that has to do with data. Because if you don't put your data in the form in which you want to have it using, there is nothing you want to do with that data that works. And that, that's one of the things where, you know, I've always mentioned that the tool does not make, um, the tool doesn't make you as a data analyst, you make you put the two to work by the, you understanding what you want to achieve. All right. So um, in in this particular instance, so we want to take out this, and and I think I've demonstrated it before, but I didn't demonstrate it as though I was performing um, data cleaning operation. I I, I didn't um, go up after it as though I'm performing. Um, data cleaning uh, operation. So, but now I will then go after it as that. All right. So the first thing you want to um, on uh, you you want is actually to ensure that the data is accurate. You want to put 
the, the data in a very accurate form, you want it to be consistent. So, and if the data is not consistent with what you're looking at, uh, in this case, we just want to have everything um, by the other date. So what matters to us now is we just want to get, I mean, the order ID. We want to get the total number of order that have actually been placed over time. All right. So now, the first thing we want to do here is actually to remove duplicate on the other ID column. And how to do that, like I said, I've demonstrated that before, and I believe somebody is doing the same thing now. Because trust me, you have this data with you. You can just cut out of it, or you can copy the data. Um, that that's the the um the workbook. That is the 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 Excel file that was tagged. Um, I don't know if that was what it was shared as um, TNT database. If I don't know if that was what it was shared. Ah, so that our uh, usual data, just to call it whatever name you might have saved it as. So now we just go ahead and then come to this data tab. And when we get to data tab, there is a section, a ribbon, which is um, on data, we have a ribbon, which is um, data two. So data two, there is this icon there. Let me see if I can. So even if I increase my data, it won't affect this at the top. So there is this icon. I don't know if you can see it clearly. Um, you will see this icon on your Excel in the data tab. So this icon is where it's telling you um, delete duplicate rows from a sheet. So that's the function of this particular um, button. So, and that is what we use to remove duplicate. So it says you can, so, and I love Excel for one thing. You can read what is there. I mean, you can read what the key does, what the button does, so that before you press spoil, I mean, uh, what's it called? They remove duplicates. Um, we click to remove duplicate, so it brings up a pop-up, and it's asking us to expand the selection, or, or we continue with the, the current selection. So we've selected column B already, so we say continue with the selected. Um, uh, selection. So then we click to remove. All right. And then it has removed 50 and left with nine. The total number is 99. So it has removed 50 duplicates. We can actually Hello? see what you are clicking on. It's not showing, it's not moving at my hand. I don't know if it is just me. Oh, oh, wow. Is anybody having the same order? And I've explained why this might look like a duplicate. It isn't, but in this sense, we're treating it as a duplicate because it appears twice in column B. And we want to remove every such occurrence and we want to apply that to everything. I mean, like this two words, so we want to remove the duplicate. And by the time we remove this, it definitely will affect this and the, the, the other. Please, if you're not speaking, just mute your mic. Somebody's mic is on. Um, that is the moment. We can't see your screen, please. My screen is shared. Don't be too assertive. It could be your network. You can see your screen. We can't see it again. We can see it. Please check out your network. I, I think I've been, I've done a good deal with my 
So I've tried mine out. So I've moved, like I said, I, I have to move around to get the best spot. So, and I think I'm one of the best spot in my house now. Okay, so. Your um, network is fine. Your network is fine. Please, people, if you want to yeah. speak, kindly raise up your hand. Signify so that we can allow you speak. All right. Your screen has been fine since Momo Sunday. It's only your screen, okay? Guys, don't unmute your mic until you are asked to. Thank you very much, sir and ma. Right, bye. Uh, please write on, sir. Thank you. All right, thank you. So um, now, so I, I'll just go ahead and then take out this, the duplicate in Colombia. All right, so um, usually we are in home. So I say go to the data tab and then come over here to data tool. So you have this icon there, which is for remove duplicate. So um, now if you click on the remove duplicate, um, icon, then you have this pop up. So by the time this pop up comes up, it's saying expand the selection. So what that is, I mean, that what that means is that oh, it wants to look through and then remove every occurrence of duplicate across board. But I say my reference for this is just that which I've selected. I just want to use B uh, as my reference in removing duplicate from this particular sheet. I believe anything that affects B, because B actually is what made others duplicate, like what I said earlier about the other date and the ship date. So this um, C2 and C3 are the same just because um, B2 and B3 are the same. So if I click remove duplicate, it's out. So um, it has brought in my selection. At this point, I might want to change my mind or do something, but this I'm okay with the selection and I say okay. So it brings me a pop up or a report of what it has done. So Microsoft Excel is sending me a report of okay, this action you just performed, this is the report of this is the result of what you've done. And the result says 50 duplicate values found and remove so because i had asked it to remove it so the first thing it did was to look for them and by the time it looked through the selected um, column uh, it, it found 50 and it removed the 50 and we are left with 49 unique values so it says 49 unique values remaining so i remember our what, what we selected was 99 i mean the the data set that we got into this place at 99 rows. So 50 plus 49 is 99. So we are good that it did what it had to do. So um, nothing is missing. So if I say, okay, so all the duplicate is gone. All right, all the duplicate is gone. So you will wonder that, oh, why do we still have this date that is C2 and C3 is the same, um, D, um, D, two and d3 is the same so it, 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 so it's because we apply it just to this but So it had only removed 50. Hello, I think um, I had an interruption. Um, I was, I had a reconnection issue, so it could have affected my sharing. So let me stop and share again.
So I was trying to explain what had happened here. That yes, um, C2 and C3 are still the same, all right? C2 and C3 are still the same, D3 and D, D2 and D3 are still the same. And you will observe something just below. So you will see that the 50 that he took out were just the 50 on this particular column B because we said he should apply it to just column B. And what happened was every they just moved up. So every other thing moved up to the places of those items that were removed. And you know, the other item remained as they were. The other item remained as they were. So we still have 99 rows, but only on the only on the what's it called? The the other ID um, column, that's where we have 49. Every other set is still 99. So what that means is that by the time you are applying this, you have to ensure that you click that it covers everything so that as it is removing it, yes, you will use um, column B as the reference, but it will actually be across everything. And this is what I mean. So I will undo now. I think we should have 99 again in column B. And then we we'll say um, delete duplicate. So let's, let's use the um, approach that we used before where we selected B. And then we say, so it's actually now continue with selection or expand the selection to everything. I said expand the selection to everything and then remove. So it's asking me, delete duplicate value to delete duplicate, select one or more column that contain duplicate. So now, so we can say on select all, I will just select just this um, other ID. So when we say, okay, it has removed it, but in this case, it has removed every other thing with it. So we won't have anything left, but only the 49 that we have. So, but only the 49. The reason is because by the time we selected this and we said, uh, okay, let me just undo for you too. So we still have um, 99 item here. So we say remove duplicate and he's asking, okay, I, I didn't make any selection, but let me explain using that first way so that you can see that other purple come up. So, so he's saying, what do you want to do? Expand the selection or continue with the current um, selection. You remember we did continue with the current selection and it did what he had to do. He removed those um, duplicates, but the duplicates were removed only in the in the column that we selected. So it removed it only for column B. But in this case, that we needed it to remove every other thing that relates to that any row that has. So any row where um, duplicate is identified. It should remove every entry on that row. So we said expand the selection and we say remove. And when we said remove, he said that he said to, to delete duplicate value, select one or more column that contain duplicate. So we we currently everything is selected. And we just on select all and we select this that we want to use as reference, which is the other ID, and we say okay. So by the time we say, okay, the same report came up because we have just 50 duplicates in the other idea and we have 49 unique values. So, and that's why we have this. So that's why we have um, the 49. And by the time we apply it, by the time we apply it, we have um, this 49. So we should have just 49 here. So this is 49. And the 49 is not just for column B. It is a call, but you could see that every other thing has just 49 columns. All right. So that is how to apply this. Both are useful. 
you might want to just remove um, just in one column alone, and you might want to use it as a reference for removing every other one in other column, that is removing across the row. So we've demonstrated both ways by which this can be implemented. So we can either just remove this, even while other things remain constant, we can remove duplicate in a particular column, and then it won't be with reference to other columns. But we can also remove duplicates in a particular column, and we'll say, take out everything that falls in the same row with those column, those um, column entry that has duplicates. And that is what we've just um, performed. All right. So the next thing is to, I, I want to check if that is okay. If that is okay. All right, please. Oh, oh, wow. Thank you. Oh, thank that's a um, Baba Tope. Thank you. So, um, so did we get it? Yes, no. Okay, let's 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 go by just ones in the chat. Let's drop ones in the chat if you get it, and you don't need me to go over it again. If you get it and you don't need me to go over it again once in the chart. So we have just, okay, somebody dropped to, somebody said go over it again. All right, so. Okay, so, um, all right. So just for the last time, I will just run it. Just for the last time, I will run it again. So just for the last time, I will just run it through for our benefit. Um, just a minute, please. Uh, Baroto, thank you. It could have been a premium feeling. Yeah. Uh, like I said, um, question, um, Mr. Baroto, it is not a must that you remove duplicate from from the um, data set. And this has to do with what your expectations are. What are you trying to do? You know, I mentioned it. What are you trying to do? If we want to get the total number of orders, let's assume this is the entire data set, right? If we want to get the total number of order by the other ID, where we were before, we'll be saying we have 99 orders. And that is not correct, okay? It's not correct that we have 99 orders. So what is correct is that So, sorry, I think I, I had sure. T 
<laughs> doctor. Doctor, I won't say anything. All right, so just a minute. I'm trying again. Okay, so um, responding to that question again, yeah, you won't be going through this, uh, and that's why we call it data cleaning. You won't be going through the data one after the other to check how many um, unique value we have here. Because, okay, your boss does ask you, I mean, your supervisor does ask you, um, Babatokwe, please get me the um the list of order i mean the number of orders that we have for today let us assume these are the transactions that happen today and you have all of this is have today so you need you have the data but you can't get it out so you need to actually clean it up by whatsoever means so one way for which you can also do that is to introduce a filter into the table and then you can then get that out. But before I show the same thing by introducing a filter, let me demonstrate this again for the benefit of those who want to um, learn this again. And I am happy that a lot of people got it at once. So now we used to be at the home, at home, so now, because we want to remove duplicate, we are coming to data tab. And then here in data two, we will see the remove duplicate. So here in data two, we will say remove duplicate. So we say remove duplicate, and it has brought this out for us. So we on, we say on select all because we want to use other ID as our um, pivots. So, and we say, okay. And then it has used that as the center of excellence to get this done for us. And say, okay, and there we go. We have um, 49 across board. All right, so without missing words now, uh, you can tell him um, we have, um, what is it called? We have, um, we have 49 order today. So we have 49 orders today. So, and you know, simply remember our count. So you can just apply count to this and you say count. So even if you don't, let us know the, the data is large and there is no serial number. And, and, and even the serial number is altered by now. But even if you don't have serial number, you definitely have the row number. So by the row number, I know by default that, I mean, we have 50 row, it is on we, we have it up to row 50 but remember we have the header so i remove the header i know how we have 49 but if you don't want to just trust all of those you can just apply our normal count and say count um b2 to b50 so b2 to b50 so when you count that way and it gives you zero okay perfect it's good I turned out sorry. So now this is another thing to teach. It's another thing to teach. So why is it giving out zero? Anybody? Any idea? Yes. Okay, please go ahead, Usma. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Your, your hand is up. Yeah, yes, good sir. evening. Yes. Good evening, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. I can hear Okay, uh, the reason why I think it's not working is probably because there's an error. I mean, it's the data set. Probably they are of not the same type, data set type. That's why it's giving that error. Okay, oh, I appreciate, very good try, and, and I really appreciate the try because that is a thing to check. So, because it should work. 
why it is not working that could be the reason but that in this case that that is not the reason and the reason is very close to what you said very close if there's an error but the error isn't in the data set all right thank you smart for that try all right so i will use the same thing that i did here I will copy and paste it here, all right? And it worked, all right? Why is it not working in Colombia? And it worked in Colombia. And I'm very sure it will work here, it will work here, but it won't work here. Why? So I'm giving you a clue already. Okay, my namesake wants to go for it. Moise, please. Moise, that, that should be a lady. Yes, it's Moise. Good evening, sir. Yeah. We, good evening. So I think it's because the column B contains not just number, but also alphabets. So That's I'll probably why it's been working. Oh, I didn't yeah, think. Good try. That. So, how do we then achieve it? I can't approve that at the moment, sir. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm, sincerely, you got it correctly. Only I, I was just asking for too much by pressing for you to give me how I am to actually action. Can I mute you? Okay, you've muted yourself. All right, great. So now, perfect. Both people did a good job and I saw somebody also saying the data set yes perfect Usman said it correctly only for it to be I mean move to the other side yeah and what he said like I said makes a lot of point because he said something possibly is wrong with the data and and I said wait maybe we should just flip it to the other side and say maybe something is wrong with the formula itself or maybe the formula should not have been applied to this data and that is what Moisa now said. That it works for the number and it's not working for the alphanumeric. So now, surprise. So now it works. So now you just need to tell it that you're counting a mix. So you're not just counting, um, you're not just counting numbers now. So this have uh, alphabet in it. So you just say count A. I don't want to interpret the A as count alphabet or count alphabet. So by the time you introduce that A in front of the count, then it will be able to count it. Perfect. And if we do the same thing here, it will count it. All right. Okay, great. So, uh, and that's it. So sometimes, your formula will be correct and something will just be off so you just need to check if it is applicable or this formula can be applied to this particular um, scenario and because you might because of this now start a a whole lot of search and before you know it um you, you're just going in circle because you already had the solution you are just not able to enter into the solution because things aren't in the right order. So I've mentioned it before and I'll, I'll say it again, that this is important, especially when we are, we, we, we want to actually do something and we need it to be in this order. You know, cleaning our data um, helps us to have an accurate and clean, I mean, accurate data to work with. So it helps us to have an accurate, and the importance of accurate data is accurate result. So the fundamental of computing, which is garbage in and garbage out, still applies. So whatsoever we feed into our analysis is the result that we will get out of it. So if you get a good result, you know, I, I was taking a training this um, week and it's about market intelligence. And you know, we're talking about cost model. It is whatsoever you feed into your model 
that will come out as the, the end result eventually. So if your model is filled, filled with things that will not work, definitely your model won't work. So please um, let us get this straight. So, okay, now let's move on from here. Now I said I would demonstrate the same thing we did by filter. So, all right. So I'll just undo all of this so that we have our 90 something again. So, okay, now you, you possibly might want to astray the, um, the data and you felt, okay, I don't just want to do all of this. I, I just want to filter, do some other things. And then, so you come to this still in the data but I click on filter. So it brings all these drop downs here. So by the time you click on this drop down, the only thing is just that this will be put in counting. So, you know, by the time you bring out this drop down, you already have all the unique, um, what's it called, other ID here. But the only thing is that you will have to count, which I don't support. All right. So, and that's just it. So, the other way to um, the other thing we'll be talking about in cleaning the data. So let us refer to our cleaned. I mean, our data that had no duplicates. All right, so we are not interested in duplicate. So the second level is about the dates. Okay, is about the dates. We don't want the date to be in the okay all right so um there is something i did recently um in, in this slide so i i was working on a spend report and i needed because um, a lot of currency were were playing out in the in the report so i needed to convert some of this to do, um, to usd i needed to convert some of this to usd so now dates comes to play a very um, significant rate, I mean, a significant um, part in this. So I want the the date formats in the um, estimate. So let me copy this and then I'll come. You know, we live in an economy where the estimate rate is very volatile. So say for instance, we just want to get something and see the exchange rate. And I just go this way, let us zoom. Let me format this to be in um, date in this format. Um, uh, yeah, let it be in this format and I say, okay. So I want also this table that I have here because maybe, uh, yeah, this is other, but let, let assume we have, we, we have exchange rates here that we want so and you know all of these days so all, all these days does not have um, their own exchange rate so some do have and, and some don't and we just calculate by those that have so i'm just removing some okay um just a minute Okay. All right, so um, do we have any duplicates here? Okay, so now we can actually have some numbers for this. I would say maybe when Nigeria was good in 2014, 150, and December 1, it has gone to 160, and then 180. 
And by this time, Jonathan was in power. But well, now, it's 2015. No, no. This is 2015. Why? All right. So um, let's say 200. So you change to 230 year. These are just arbitrary numbers. So, so um, okay, let us zoom it fell at this point and then it has not gone worse than it went up again. Hold on, sir. Um, Usman, please mute your mic, please. Thank you. So let's just, these are non Nigerian exchange rates. Well, it's not even a um, USD to NIDA. You just exchange rates from one country that I don't know. All right, before we read the change, we say I'm projecting what is not as of 2017. All right, so we have all of this. So, you know, you want to have like for like. So you want to have like for like. Now, you have this date in this format. You have this date in this format. So ask me if it will work or it won't work. I'll tell you it will. It will work. Wait. Let me get to see the earlier date now. So let me just leave that aside. So now I want to have, because I want to compare, I want to bring this data into this sheet. And I want this also to be in the same format. So now formatting is part of cleaning up data. So we format data in, and we, we set data in the right format that they should be. See, funny enough, I mean, good enough, this is in, um it's already in date um format but not in the right date sequence that we want so then we come over here and make it to the right one that we want based on what we want to compare it with so there is nothing to mean because by the time you're working on live data there are a lot of things that could actually happen a lot of things could happen so you don't just want that to be one of the things you'll be worried about that, oh, is it because of this that this is not working? Is it because of, so don't allow formatting to be one of, one of the reason you, you, you will just be working in cycle, whereas you've gotten the, um, the answer only that the formatting isn't right, okay? Now, uh, and that is a side. So the next thing, so we have actually put it, put it in the right format and, this now, if you want to look up anything with this, we are sure that it is in the right order. So now, possibly we have a, a cell. So let me do something. Quickly. Hello. So let me stop and share again. Some could have lost my screen. All right. So now.
So one of the ways, now let us zoom when we have this. Okay, let us zoom when we have this data. When this data came, it came in this format, all right? And your manager said, or the standard of the organization, we don't just shout at people in writing and, you know, maybe the organization already said, no, um, everything must be in sentence case. But because when they were setting up the ERP system that you were using, um, the, those that actually did the column or the inventory guys that were, um, or, or those that did the classification of the ship mode and put it in, um, what's it called, in uppercase, and you need to change it. So there is no cause for alarm because you, you, it, it stands out in all of your, your report and that every other thing is in low, I mean, is in proper form. And the, the only one that is all case is this. And you just want to um, put it in this case. So um, there are several ways by which you can achieve that. I think one of the things we did last week was flash fill. So we did flash fill last week. We can apply to this as well. So it, it can work, but instead of just applying flash fill to this, um, what, what can we do is just to use um, what we call proper. So there is um, a function called proper that makes uh, that brings back or what's your text to the proper form. So see, proper now uses a um, sentence case in word. So proper is the same thing as case. I mean, uh, no, not sentence case now. It, it's um, what's it called? Capitalize each word. I think that's the counterpart in word, in Microsoft Word. Capitalize each word. So proper we capitalize each word. Proper we capitalize each word. And if it is, uh, and I think that is what we need here. So proper, we capitalize it short. And it can bring it from this form that it is currently is, or even if it is in this form. Because you could just have some people while setting up, they did something. And so let us zoom. This was what was done. So in, in other case, it, it could be that all will be in lower form. It must be all um, small letters. And you don't want all small letters. You can still bring it from small letters to OK. So So you can see our feedback in the proper form and it works. So basically you have um, this in your in your data set. All right. Okay, good. So the next one that we'll be going to is is to combine um, two cells. So now, we, we have done it before while I was trying to explain some things now. So, okay, so now, we have um, Clara and we have Bert. We have um, Darren Van Oof. So I guess so we have this and we have this um, guy.
Okay, so having copied out all of this, we can do something like this and say that it should take it should it should almost go flash view, but you could see that that isn't working for us at the moment. So it's not working for us at the moment. So and we want to um, split the two cells. So now, which of these did we use the other time to actually perform this? Because I demonstrated this um, showing how we can separate and how we can bring together. Anybody? Please, sir, can you come again? Please, can you come again? So yeah, I, I said, I, I, I demonstrated mm -hmm. this separating Clara got, you know, we I introduced mm -hmm. us to flash view. Oh, I didn't know how to do this again. Yeah. So I said, now, in a case, we can actually flash view and it will give us all of this because we already showed it the pattern that we want. But in this case, it's not coming out the way we wanted it because he possibly is seeing it as something that he can't perform for us. But there's a way we can actually achieve this um, in exam. We've achieved it before in this class. So remind us. Yes, you can use left function, left and right function to do that and even me and how do we apply the equals to and even and even me i think there is one they call me where you get the middle number two and yeah yeah but left so, and right function oh yeah you are guiding me ah uh, guiding you okay uh, okay equals to left Customer's name. I can't see what you're doing actually. I can't see your drop down. Okay, I can see. Left, then the text, which text K to number of characters. What number of characters do you want to do you want to extract? And the number of characters you want to extract because the left is the leftmost part. I don't know if you want to finish this clear. Or you want a certain number of the number, probably four or five. Anyone you want, you can impute it and click enter. Um, close your brackets, then enter. Hit the enter key. Are you there? What I want is that it should give me Clara. Yes, I'm okay. there. It should give me Clara. Okay, okay. the number of characters there. Me... Okay, you want it to give you which number? Sorry. If it's for Claire, then you have to just put six characters. That's all, comma six. Then you close the bracket. Not number now. You don't get that. That won't, that won't serve my purpose. I will have to do that. I will have to do that for everyone independently. No, you, I don't think you need to do that independently. Who says it's, gonna, it's not going to work for other cells? Or do you want to demarcate them? Are you talking about the limiter here? I'm, I'm really lost, kind of. Yes. Yes, yeah, so if, if, I, if I specify the number of character, right? Can you, I'm with you. Are, are, are you following? You. Yes, yes, yeah, sure. Okay, if I specify the number of character, what that will mean is that what it is for the first row is not what it is for the second row. You get that? Yes, I did. So, that, and that is where I was saying I will have to repeat the same thing um, for all of them okay uh, so but there's a way okay. okay go ahead no 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 please do go ahead no 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 please 
it's a class it's, it's not but did you get my thought in saying like i can get out clear and, and that's six comma six okay and say enter which is quite easy but mm -hmm. if i should drag it across this look at what i have okay okay like I'm now you. sean sean the the hole from um the his other name had actually come to it in and included even, already and for for brosina we we didn't have it was removed. and yeah. that's what i'm saying if i am to specify the number of characters i will not be able to apply it across board okay please we're going to All use right. text column yes i get that i think i go where you're saying so i think the perfect um, function to use is text to column then we use the limiter, give it a space to demarcate the two. So it's going to actually separate the stuff for us, the, the names for us very well. And how do we do that? We'll get to, um, let's go over to data, if I'm right. Let's go to data first. Data. Okay, let On me data. clear this. Okay, data. Yes. Sorry, I'm trying to look through. Yes, yeah, so we go to data tools. On that data tools um, ribbon or group, we get to text to column. Okay. You click on text to column. I can't see your drop down. So click on text to column. Okay. I can't see your drop down. I don't know what is there. You can still see it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we are going to click on um, delimiter. We are not going to use fixed width. Um, we are going to click on delimiter. Then next. Okay. Then now we're going to use space to demarcate that not comma. So instead of that, we will check the tab and um, the tab, then check um space. I think we need to uncheck the tab. Is that necessary? Okay. Then um we already see a preview of what it's going to look like. But I think you're supposed to select all the columns because it's actually giving us only one, which is only for clear um, gutter or thereabouts. But click next. Let's drag it down and know if it's going to work. Oh, okay. I just I just removed it to go back. All right. So let me follow what you said. So fix um, next uh, separate by the, uh, space. That's going to separate our customer name. We don't want that. So we select from where our data is starting from, which is actually um, IJK2. Select it down to where the data okay. stops. Yes. I now feel it so big. Oh my goodness, Jesus. Next. Mm -hmm. Then finish. So we have this. I know that's what it's going to be. All right. So, um, sorry, let me look at the person that has been guiding me. Where are you? So I'm here. Name? My name is Oinye. Okay. Oinye. Yeah. Thank you, Oinye. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, oh. perfect. But we have issues with this guy. Somebody is raising his hand out. Um.
Please go ahead, sir. Uh, your mic, I think your network. Okay, um, Imana's arm is down. All right. Okay. All right, so, um, Sabia, you want to say something? Okay, Sabia, your home suggestion. Please go ahead. Hello. Abdul Kadri. If you are speaking, you are muted. All right, so let's go ahead. Okay, so let's limit about um who is out. So I, I think he's the only one that is out. He's the only one that has three names. So one way you can actually achieve that using still delimiter is to just come here and change the the, the delimiter between the two of them so that by the time we apply this. So I've selected. So that by the time you apply this, it will not um, acknowledge the space between them as so it won't acknowledge the space. But another way to actually um, do it is to use your right. Why this space is kept there? So we can use our right. Excuse me. We can use right to actually. So now we started writing functions. And we started to write. That is, we want to search from the right and then get to the place where we have that particular um, space. But in this case, it will it, it will observe uh, Mosico off first before observing Van. So I, I'll leave that to us to figure out. Use um, right. If you sit with the length of word and then search where the, the space comes from. Okay, so if you if you use um right, and this is what I mean, and this is the um conventional one that you can easily write. Um right and then you're looking at this particular cell uh you you are then trying to see what is the length of of the words that is found in this particular cell because you want it to by the length of the word do some check and then you want to separate it from the answer you have here the search but trust me the first thing the first space that will be seen here no search for the stress space 
and um, in this, the first place in this. So and take it to. So we we'll now not say um, minus one now. So we we'll now do minus. Okay, let me first do minus one so that you see what comes up. And I want you to figure out the last one yourself. I want to no minus one. Yes, that's the last button. So now it's bringing out and hoof. So figure out how it will bring out just um van and without roof. So I, I have I've put this here, but there is a way you can actually go about it that it will give you the correct answer. It will it will give you van without hoof. So playing around with it, let me help your mind. So playing around with it, this is what you get. So I intentionally put the minus one so that you know what that is performing and then you can leverage on it to achieve what you want. All right. Somebody is thinking about plus already. So if you plus, you have space. If you do minus, you have. So you can play around with it. All right. So. Now, let me get into something else. Um, and, and that would be uh, just a minute. Yeah, so one of if you check the um, the curriculum, you see that we are to get into something very uh, significant tonight after just walking through all of this. Uh, possible way of cleaning data. Uh, I should, I should touch this, and uh, I should touch this so that, in case you are faced with it, and this is a very common uh, um, thing. Um, okay, so we did something like this the last time. We did something like this the last time. So. I've actually put some space in, in this. So most of the data you'll be downloading online of from SQL or SQL, they might have space. Okay, they might have space. So you want to oh no. Okay, let's let's get this into. Let's get this into this. So they might have space. Um, I want to add space to this. Okay, if if I let me let me add let me add space to this using left. Okay. Um, uh, so that we can see that. Sorry. Um, left this command search and then um, separate with this in this. And yeah, close my brackets. So by default, so by default, I have space in all of this. So all of these have space, one one spaces in their in them. Okay, they have one space in them. I mean one space in them. So one of the ways to remove this space, it could be more than one. It could be just one is to use the function trim. So trim will 
help remove the space that is there. So, I mean, there are several ways to achieve that. You can use stream. So you will see, okay, let me. Stream has taken out all these spaces. So there are, uh, we can use um, len. So count spaces as a character. So len count spaces as character. So, so we, we can. So you will see that this has six characters in it. I mean, seven characters in it, and this has. Okay, so, so we have, sorry, just a minute. I don't know if I'm the only one. We can't hear you again, sir. Just um, can you unmute your mic, Mr. John? I think he said just a minute or something. I think he excused himself. All right, thank you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I I just took some minute of um. Okay. Sorry, I, I'm here. I'm just trying to review something. Uh, it's it's about the class, it's not something else. So, uh, like I was saying, um, we want to be sure that we are working in line with our curriculum. So, um, okay, as I was saying, you could see that this that th this is for hell. This is for Columb hell. Um, and this is for um, M. So, and this is for him. So you could see that all of them, if I should drag this across board, then we have one, there will be one shot if I, Check the difference. There will be one shot because there is space in hell and there are no space in in M. So I mean that's how to use um, the, the function train. So what it does is that it helps us to take out the um, the extra space that we might have in our data. And 
many at times, especially in numbers. So, okay, let, let me demonstrate this now so that we can see the importance of act, actually taking those out, especially when it comes to number. So I, I have put seven here and eight here. So let me not go too much. If I say it should sum. So this is this is doing this because possibly it does it has corrected it by itself because I put a space and it didn't acknowledge my space. But when you download these things, there are some that we have space. That I have and you know it's removing the space that I'm putting there myself. But some 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 data where you download them, they come with space in the number um, part. If you don't remove those um, space, it won't sum up. If you if we do the sum, this that does not have eight. I mean that does not have space. Eight doesn't have space. Let's assume this have space. Okay, let me even try and make it have space by force. All right. So I've made it add space by force, okay? So I did the sum. You now be wondering, so now it's looking as if they are not aligned. So you might have it aligned in the same format. So you now do a sum N2 and N3, and then you'll be discovering that, oh, it is having, it is not summing up. You know that it should not be eight, but now it's returning eight. So sometimes, and that's the importance of removing those SS space. So because somebody might be thinking, why remove space? This is what happens when you have space that is not removed. All right. So and once we remove this, it's it actually will work and the sum will work. So I, I just had to create that space there. But there are some data that even from start to finish. The space will be dead, so you just have to remove that excess uh, space. Sorry. So moving on. So we've done separating and combining. We've done deleting um, column. Have we done that? No. So, but I mean, let's not assume that everybody now knows how to delete a column. Yeah, it could be very funny. So to delete a column, because the column might not be useful for us. The column might not be useful for us, and we just felt, let us take it out. Let us take this column out manually. Uh, we are not using any formula to take it out. We are not using any. We just want to have it removed. So segments, we don't need you. You can just go. So, I mean, several ways to remove it. We can clear the content, and we can take it out outrightly. So it's just by uh, right clicking on, on, on the column haven't been selected. So after selecting, we right click on it. And then, we, like I said, we can clear the content and we can delete it outright. And another thing we can do to it is we can hide it. Because some things we, are not, we don't need now, we might need later. So, but we don't just want to see it now. And maybe it's even confusing us at the moment. So you might either hide it now instead of fgh we have fh so you should know that something is missing so anytime and you might be handed the data that is like this and you are looking for a very crucial information maybe the last person that used it just didn't want all of this and you know instead of using um, um freeze pain instead of freezing the pain he just did not want to freeze pain but he wants to see um, every other thing but this that I'm selecting from here to J. You want to see every other thing but um, but E to J. So now he had actually um, um, eat the column. So you can unhide those columns because I've seen situations where uh, somebody will say, oh, somebody has, I can't see this. I can see D, I can see K, I know something is in between. So the way to unhide this column is actually to just select over it. So the, several, you, you can double click, you can double click to have them out. 
So at the point where you have <laughs> So you can double click to have them out. And the other way to, to achieve that is to actually, instead of just double clicking and bringing them out one after the other, you can just select over the first and the, um, the previous and the next column to those that are hidden, and then um, just say on hide column. So, and, and you, you will have that, um, column come out and if it is a case where we want to just take them out uprightly so say for instance we want to take out segments take out this and this and so we can just delete and then they are out okay so they are out and that's deleting and that's deleting a column and the same way i mean the same thing goes for deleting a row okay so Oh, I, I, I mentioned the other time that we can clear content. So you can clear content using the delete button on your, on your keyboard, or you can also right click and use the clear content button to clear content. So the content will be cleared. The format remains, but the text, I mean, whatsoever is there will be taken out. And the same thing applies for this, um, the rows. So you'll right click, you can clear content of those rows and then you can hide. So we're reading the row. So sometimes just say, something is there. I know something is there, but I can't see it. Three, between three and 13, I can't see what is there. So it could be the role is hidden, and then you just want to run hide it. So I just eat another one. So, so just say on hide. So, so just say on hide. So and everything that I was reading had now come out. All right. So, and if we want to take it out outrightly, it's the same way. We just say delete, and then it's gone. All right. So. Okay, so um, there are times that um, data will be missing. Data will be missing and it will be totally out. The, to the data will be totally out. You won't have data for particular um, row. So what should you do in handling, um, what's it called, in handling missing data? There are several school of thought to this, but you need to see uh, what kind of data is missing. If it is value and, and you want to manage that, so some will say, um, do an average of what you have across board and then fill it with an, um, what's it called? Filling an average of in, in those spaces uh call, in those spaces that are without any entry but some would say take it out um totally if they are actually very key elements that are missing so and how do you know so if we have just maybe one item missing you can extrapolate but if in a row you have more than three items that are missing so because a way where you can extrapolate and I'll show that very shortly. So So if um, do we have I, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me undo and get. I think some of the column I've removed will help us. All right. So now, if if we have, if the city of this guy is missing, 
if the city is missing. So let me undo. Okay. So let us assume this city is missing. Um, and this city is missing. So, and one thing is we don't want to work with a, a data set that has uh, missing data because missing data could make the difference between everything that we are doing. Missing data could just, could either, ma, you, you would think that it should be it's just one thing that is missing. So some people will say, ah, it's just one, it's just one. Why can't we just um, get something and then um, do something about it? But it, it doesn't play out that way. So you must be sure that you are, you are, you have a base before you can actually fill in a missing data because a missing data could actually qualify a rule for being taken out. So it could be a reason why you want to take out an entire rule in your data set. So now I was explaining this particular one now. So this has every other information but this. Now, what we can do to such a, a case as this is to is from the United States and the state is California. So it has two reference now. It has um, the country okay, so uh, I believe we can see um, I was off for just some minutes, I mean a second, not up to a minute, some seconds. So you see have the state, the country and the state. So the first thing you want to do is to filter by the state. Now, because the country is the same for all of them, you want to filter by the state and say, um, oh no, that wasn't what I want to do, and say California. Because it's not a number, so you can't be taking, um, but excuse me. So, so it is encouraged that which which of these has the most count, so it should be used to populate this, and that's Los Angeles. I can't and see us. I can't see your screen, Mister John. Okay could be because of the reconnection. Okay, how is it now? Hope it's better now. I think everybody can now see, all right. So now, so what, what we can do is to then replace it with the um, with, with the city that appears the most. That's a way to actually um, fill in the missing data. So we can then note it that this was actually populated but I said we can put a note there by just saying um, shift F2 and you can put a note here saying this was populated by um, inferring, I mean, we just inferred that this should be it, okay? So we remove the, the note. So now, in a case where, for instance, this is not there, this is not there, this is not there. So there's no way we can actually infer. Um, so your because we don't know the country, I just, we don't know the. I can only see, I can't see the screen, like the actual. I can only see the.
All right, I think it should be better now, right? Okay. Let me take that again. So, so we, we have this that is taken out and we have the city taken out. The, the city is not there. I want to just get the city also, based on your other information. We have. We, we, I don't know, please, before you speak, every you other person use your mic. Others can see, okay? Every time you come on to speak that way, you are concluding and you are interrupting others. That's why I said, ask before you unmute yourself. Thank you. And you can drop it in chat so that, and be sure if my screen is not shared, doctor will call my attention to it or any of the um, leader in the house. Okay, thank you. So now this is missing. You know, the first thing we did was we found that it was missing, and we said, What well, can we do it as a state? So why not just check for all that has similar state and check the most occurring city? So looking through it. We saw that um, Los Angeles is the most occurring city. And so um, it is one of the. Uh, approach to filling in and uh, missing what is different, and then you fill it in. So you can put a note or you mark it out to say, oh, these are data, missing data that were. Uh, populated by um, um, extrapolation. So, because things that we are doing, we are just extrapolating that since it is from this city and it's from this state, so it, um, the chances of it coming from Los Angeles is high because we have most of these people from Los Angeles. So, if it happened to be a value, okay. If it happens like this lead time, okay. If this is house, all right. So if this is us, there are ways by which we can populate it if we need to. So if we need to, so we can take the mean of all of this. So we can fill it with the mean of all of this, all right. So we can take the mean of this, and the mean is the average, okay, um, of of all of this. And then we have 4.2. So these are not in decimal. So 4.2, we can actually return four for it. So the same way we can then have it here to be just to mark it out. So I was explaining something the other time that yes, we are feeling this, but imagine that the case was that this O3 is out that we didn't have all of this, what do we do? What do we do? So we don't have anything to infer with. So we don't have any point, reference point, anything that we can infer from. So this is one of the things that lead to um, people, uh, most of all, I being taken out. So you can take out this rule, but because these are just details about um, country, city and state, so the best thing you can put here is to replace it with others. So this can form your orders. So you would have seen a lot of um, data that you would felt, uh, what, what, what do they mean by orders? So it could be that it is not available. So that by the time we are populating our report, right? By the time we are populating our report, we'll have a segment for orders. And that will account to those that we don't know where they fall to. We don't know which country they fall to, but they buy from us. Remember, this is a retail data set or a, a drop shipment pumping data set. We don't know where their country is. It wasn't captured in the system. And it's missing on our data, but we know they are from somewhere. We can say, okay, we also can say for real, out of all of this, we can say, 
they are from United States because this data is for United States. So there is no other country that could actually come into this. So, so we can infer United States. But for this and this, we can't tell. We have a lot of states in the United States. Where we have a lot of cities. So because we don't have any guidance to which states, I mean, you know, in the case where we have the country which is constant for all, and we have the state which is California in this case, we're able to infer the city based on the um, largest occurring city in our data from uh, California. But in a case where we are able to get um, um, the, we don't have the city and we don't have the state, so you can put it as others. And one of the things we're trying to eradicate is we don't want the data. We want our analysis, our, there should be, because these people, they could be more than this. We want something to actually go into the record. Because if we just take them out, say for instance, if it is if it is sales, which this is in this case, if we take this um, rule or if we take this rule out in its entirety, you know what we have done? We have actually taken some sales um, report out. Okay, so we have taken, you know, invariably this has some sales value to it. Um, let me just drag it across and say a few series. Okay. Just to have different different prices. All right. So now, if I take this away, and let us assume this is sales. So we'll be running off soon. So if this is sales, if I take this away because the other we don't know where they belong and we don't want missing data, I have deleted these sales by by doing this. So by the time we are doing the sum of sales, hmm? so let me do some here. So by the time we are doing the sum of sales, so this is this. So we have this already to be 6,804. So now, because this is not available, I am, I want to take it out because I don't want any missing data in my, any missing entry in my data. So by the time I take it out, oh, because there is a reference point here. So by the time I take it out, from what we have before, I think 6806 or 860 or something. So it has 6804. All right, so it, it has reduced to um, five, Two four zero, okay, five two four zero. That is what that that could cause us. But instead of taking it out, we might devise a means to now, uh, Mosico, to now account for them under others. So with this, we have not reduced our value, our sales value, which is important to us more than even this. We just want to know with this where is our sales coming from. But what is more important to us than just the sales, I mean, than just the sales, sorry, than just the location is our sales. This is this is more important to the business. But the business also want to know about the city and states where that are contributing to, to this state. But if we, because it is not complete or we have missing entry and we take them out, because we'll be taking out the entire rule, we possibly, not even possibly, we will also take out our sales in that regard. So what we can do is actually to find a replacement for it. We can target as all others so that by the time we are reporting and we report for all the state, we report for all the city, we can now say others. And this order constitutes those that we don't know where they are from due to missing entry. And I'd also mention 
how we can get it if it is a number. And there are some data that you can use average. There are some data you can use average for um, at this moment. I think that is where we will end. So tonight we ought to get into um, pivot table, I mean pivot chart, but apologies that we, I don't know how slow we went and that is my own fault. Uh, yeah, we, next week will be better at, at it so that we will be able to cover as much as we should. So um, at this point, I don't know if there are any questions that I can quickly answer before we call it a day. Yeah, okay. Um, let me see the list. Okay, Benson is first. Yeah, I can you clearly can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you so much, sir, for this section. Uh, and my question is this. Um, when it comes to, for example, um, one okay, I want to be sure, so let me just say this. Um, what I got from today's class is that you should, you're trying to say that we should make sure that we don't just delete any column out anyhow. But my question, my question now goes this way, is that one of in a situation whereby we have large data a, a large data set and probably the missing um probably um where we have missing um data and not in the upper part so how what process do we do we now need to start going through every um, row one by one to identify missing data set or it has actually been a, it has been a question in my heart for for so long how do people just get to just figure out okay where is um where is the missing data and, and all so i just want to ask if there is a process or it's just that i have to be scanning through one by one thank you so much sir. okay um yeah you're welcome uh thank you usma usma yeah it's benson i know you're the one who asked but usma immediately dropped a message in the chat saying filter and that's just um, it so i want to quickly demonstrate it by oh i don't love okay i won't save it let me just remove couple of data and this exercise might take us another five minutes if you all don't mind all right so i'm taking out the so one thing you can quickly do and we did it at the start of the class but you know sometimes when we were, when we perform some actions and we don't call them i mean maybe we don't emphasize it as a should um we don't get the right um advantage of them okay i think i've done enough all right so one of the things you can do is to go to the base of that your very large data and i think this is maybe somewhat large as well and you know we have we know that the last is 9994 9994 so you could just do a simple count if at the base I mean, I said count it, count A at the base, and then count from which cell am I working on? A, A2 to A9994, right? So 995. All right. So I want to count that. So I know I should have, my answer should be 9994. So by the time you drag it across board, okay? So you will know 
which one has a missing data. So there's another thing you can just perform and say equals this minus um, 9994. So by the time you click enter, anyone that has less than zero has a missing data. All right. So this has no missing data. This has no missing data. But this has two missing data. This has one. This has two. This has. So this has seven missing data. This has six missing data. This has five. So this is a way to know. Also, going by the advice of um, of Usma, let's go to the um, to the top of the page. All right. So you can also as well filter. All right. So by the time you filter. But when you do filter, you will want to be going there one after the other to see if you have um, blanks. So you can be searching blank. So or you just look through. But I think one of the fastest way to do it is just go to your um, the, the base of your data. You do a count A and then um or so you, you can also do um, um something is blank so but but that one might need you to inside the column and just say because it's blank true or false so but the, this one that we did first we might might be the the fastest solution there are several other ways I hope that answers that question. Yes, yes, uh, yes I, I, I think I like this your this particular one yesterday because the one I know is that blank one. So and I have to be taking from one. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Okay. There, there are several ways, like I said, but I mean this this might not be taught in textbook. It is just you knowing what the function does, just apply it. It might not be in the place of finding space. It could be in something else. You'll be shocked. A lot of formula can be used to get the same thing. So he is no longer saying anything because we have gone past time. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I wanted you, to everyone. say something, right? But all right. Okay, a quick one, just a quick one. When you have a large data set and most of them are missing, because I've worked with a large data set that 11 thousand rows we are blank we are blank so in that situation what am i going to do am i supposed to write others because i was suggesting writing in a not available n slash a not available but your suggestion proved otherwise because even when i was doing the analysis it was not really tallying like there were some loopholes in my analysis because of the blanks there so what do you suggest i do okay good those blank rows they were totally blank right not blank like not not old like a particular rows like in the state column now almost eleven thousand yeah. rows in the state column only we are blank okay okay just that particular state column i mean you are just saying now not exact but yes in so if that is the case, I think you can put it as orders because it makes a better sense to put it as orders that are, that are not available or not um, any. Why is because you can see other states in your, while re reporting your, while presenting your report to other states, but not applicable states, I mean not available states might not be a way to report so but you can say uh this state contribute this this state contribute this um the burden of disease in this state is this the burden of disease in this state it is but this but other states has this much burden and you will have seen some statistics some analysis where even the others is bigger than the one that has uh musical that has name so it will just be said that 
those that has name are focused, but we have others that have this body. So, and that could also help us to say, oh, if elsewhere, but you might now want to put a caveat that some of this data that, that, that speaks to others, they could still have, I mean, these states that are named could still have some contribution or some portion in these orders, but they are actually, the data are not uh, multiple. Um, didn't speak to that. But you also want to know the ratio of your blanks in, in the in your ratio of missing data. And that will inform if you even want to use that data in the first place for your analysis. Yeah, the ratio of missing data. If, like you said, 11,000, how, um, how large is even the data that 11,000 is missing? So you want to see what is the ratio of your data um, to the missing data to even the entire data set so that you know if it is significant, you want to retain that data. But if you, if that is all you have to work with, then you have to work around it. That is why we are we. But as you as you are working around it, you must be ready to report it the same way you are working around. So all your assumption must actually go into your reporting so that nobody will be able to fault your report. Yeah. All right. So um, thank you very much for tonight. I am always glad to be here. Sincerely, I'm always glad to be here. And for the next few weeks, we won't be tired of ourselves. And uh, I'm glad that you're always here. Over to you, doctor. And I follow this for my network. Doctor, are you there? Doctor, we can't hear you if you are speaking. I know you are here. Okay, just a minute while doctor comes off. Yeah. Uh, doctor, we can't hear you. All right, so, um, like, um, uh, let me just use the word of doctor in, the, in his opening remark. He won't be here to close the so I will just be closing now. He advised, and I picked that from him today. I mean, I've always known that, but it sounds better to my hearing this evening. You don't get feel or you don't get fed by watching other people eat. No matter how, if, if you can actually be fed by watching other people eat, I possibly won't have to waste money on lunch or breakfast. I'll just go to the eateries around. I'll just park outside the eatery and watch people eat, and then I'll be fed. But that's not how it works. So I have to actually go down there, either by begging for the food, and I pray none of us will beg for food, or either by, you shall have to have that food and consume the food, and that is when you will be fed. So please don't just leave it to the point where we discuss in class and just go away and you know you don't do anything with it. So go try your hands on it and also read up. And I believe we can only be better. And put yourself out there on LinkedIn. People are looking for people. I mean, we write a lot in the world and not with so many people are here today. So, and just the few people that are here, what the world is looking for. This could sound like, oh, he's, he's trying to motivate us. I'm not motivating you, and that's a real thing. I don't 
I, as much as I love to motivate people, I don't lie. So what you have, I used to be in this state where I think I don't know anything until people start paying for what I know. That is when I started doing that I know. So epistemology is the theory of knowledge. How do you know what to think you know? So there is a theory of knowledge. You don't sometimes know what you think you know. You, you can, if I ask you how many things you know now, you can't even tell how many things you know, but be sure you know a lot of things. So please don't wait until you come to a point that things that you know, you get people are getting paid for it and you might be saying, but I know that thing doesn't work like that in this world. It is only to those that have declared themselves to be available and that knows it. And put yourself, this is the generation of noise makers. And I have no apologies for that. Make noise about your skill. All right. So I, I think that will be all for tonight.